Hello, Bethel Baptist Church. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's Teaching in Ethics. Uh, as we continue on in this series, uh, specifically now as we are going through different ethical theories that are out there. Uh, remember, ethics is the study of the good and how we get there. And uh, in any ethical system, there are three main questions that we're going to be asking of it. First, how does it define the word good? Uh, we have to know what is good if we are going to try to get there. Secondly, what does this uh, theory think is the fundamental wrong in the world or problem in the world? What is the main problem? Or in other words, the thing that is keeping us from getting to the good. What is that hurdle that must be overcome? And then third, uh, what actions or how do we get to the good? What actions must we must do? What is the solution to the problem? And, and so last week we looked at cultural relativism, which defines good as whatever is decided by the culture. Uh, it is culture, cultural diversity itself is good, the differences. Um, and so the fundamental problem in the world is pride, arrogance, ethnocentricity, um, which keeps us from the good, thinking that our culture is better than other cultures, not realizing that we are looking at the world uh, with veils over our eyes. And so the way we overcome this good is we must uh, learn tolerance. We must learn about other cultures and how to promote tolerance. Uh, we don't um, believe that specific actions in other cultures are bad. Uh, it's just depending upon that culture. So we must uh, get over that in our life. Now, the major issues or the major issue is with this system is simply that it's just not true, that there are cultures, there are cultural things that are better. There is objective truth over cultures and uh, it doesn't get a just change based on what the culture decides. Now that was last week. This week we're going to be moving into another system called ethical egoism. Ethical egoism. Uh, as I've been saying, I've been working through Wilkins' book, Bumper Sticker Ethics, and he says uh, this of ethical egoism, that um, we should not, the ethical egoist uh, believes that we should not fear selfishness, but rather embrace it as the highest principle of morality egoism, a love of self, egoism. Um, this is going to be promoted uh, a very strongly, kind of one of the founding fathers of this, mothers I guess, is Ayn Rand. <clears throat> she wrote a book called The Virtue of Selfishness. And in this she argues that uh, one of the main problems in the world is altruism. Uh, altruism is this idea that we must selfishly ask, selflessly act for the better interest of others, even at the harm for ourselves. And uh, she argues that this is uh, goes fundamentally against our naturalistic tendencies, the the naturalism in human nature. That by nature we always, like animals, are looking for our own interest first. Um, and so ultimately, the egoist says however, that when we act out of our interests, our best interest, we will probably uh, act for the interest of society. Um, and, and so <clears throat> we got to be careful with an egoist because we don't want to mischaracterize the egoist. You see, most people would say um, what a ethical egoist would argue, Ayn Rand would argue, would be something like just whatever our wants or desires are, that's what we should have. And so we uh, to, to really live in this system, just whatever we desire, do it. But Ayn Rand would not argue that. She would, she would take a very more uh, rationalistic approach to uh, your egoism, which would be that you must be really thoughtful of what's truly in your best interest, not just what your supposed desires are. Um, and so you have to be able to play the long game in your self-interest and be thinking consequentially down the line, not just do I want this now, but uh, Ayn Rand would say it is good to deprive yourselves of things that you want right now in the interest of yourself later on. And so an egoist wouldn't say just uh, whatever you want, it would be a very thoughtful um, process to get what you want. Uh, so what's really best for you? Um, and so, <clears throat> So when you do that though, when you are thinking, according to an egoist, when you are really thinking of what is in your best interest long term, 
you will necessarily think of what is in the best interest of the community as a whole. You will naturally start taking care of the community while taking care of yourself. And so an egoist would say, sure, you want to steal. You might want that right now, but you know it's not in your best interest to steal because if you steal, then somebody you might make an enemy of them and then that person could steal from you and harm you and so you don't want to steal uh, that's not actually in your best interest <clears throat> and so you don't just get to take whatever you want but understand that the reason it is morally bad to steal is not because there is an objective moral truth out there that says it's bad to steal. It's not bad to steal because you would be hurting somebody else in stealing. You, It's bad to steal because ultimately you would probably be hurting yourself in stealing. And so the egoist would, would say some things are right or wrong based upon what it would do to you in the future. Uh, egoism is, is known, this will be another big word for you, is known as a consequentialist ethic or a teleological, a consequent, well, I'll just say it this way, a consequentialist ethic based upon something is good or bad based upon the consequences that it produces. There are other ethical theories out there that we'll get to, uh, but it's based upon what perceived could happen in the future. Something is good or bad based on the consequences that it produces, specifically the consequences that it produces for you in the long term. So, with that being said, that quick synopsis of ethical egoism, how would they define good? Good is you, your self-preservation, your self-interest. This is based very much on naturalistic tendency, evolutionary tendencies, um, animal instinct. You and your survival are what is good and the primary good in the world. The, the problem is that um, religions um, and you know she'll attack religions, but religions and uh, other kind of ideas that that push altruistic behavior. Altruism in the, is the problem. Anything that promotes altruism is a problem because it's damaging to yourself and it goes against reason. Uh, that she would argue reason teaches us that we should be caring for ourselves. And things that are telling you not to care for yourself are the main problem in this world, telling you that you need to care for other people. And so what is the solution to this problem? That we need to focus more on reason and deliberation on what is best for us. Uh, we must put aside all of these childish uh, ideas that are telling us to care for other people and, and focus primarily on our us uh, based upon uh, deep thoughtful reason. Okay, so with that being said, I, where do we see this in society? Well, I think ethical egoism uh, very weakly we see all over the place. Uh, the idea of just our desires, what do we want, what's best for us, things like that. I mean, I think we see that everywhere. But in in a very specific, in the, the way Ayn Rand would have said it, I think that we see it primarily in the self-help book or the self-help movement of today. Uh, the the therapeutic self, the building up of oneself, that you need to get yourself in order because that is what is best for you. And if you don't have yourself in order, how can you um, help other people, things like that. And really, if you the self-help industry is a billion dollar industry. Uh, you see this in uh, the, the body image ideas. You see this in, in mental care for yourself. You see this in the, the deep movement in psychological studies over the last I don't know, 50 years or so. Uh, you, you see this in, um, in body care, which I mentioned, so like the gyms and things like that. <clears throat> All of these things have this idea that you need to take care of yourself primarily and do what is best for you. Um, and, uh, and, you know, if you've ever heard in this kind of movement, the, uh, you need to get rid of neg negative people in your life. Uh, you need to think positively about yourself. You need to care about yourself better. Uh, all of these kind of movements are really rooted in this ethical egoism. Now, with that being said, uh, I want to go through some good things about this that I think press up against Christianity in a helpful way in, in thinking through our thoughts. First, um, I think that in Christianity, we wrongly assume that God is frustrated when we care about ourselves. Uh, and I think that is wrong. We should care about taking care of ourselves. We should care about 
um, taking care of ourselves mentally and physically and oh, productivity that's another productivity is another area in which you will see uh, this ethical egoism come out but <clears throat> where uh, you know the Bible regularly speaks of taking care of ourselves and assumes that we have a self-love and doesn't always think about it wrongly uh, it, it does talk about a reward. You should seek a reward. You are not a fool for selling everything you have for a reward in the future. That's ethical egoism. I want what's best for me, and what's best for me is God and his glory. What's best for me is heaven, to be with him forever. That is what's best for me, and I want that for myself. And there's nothing wrong with wanting that for myself. There's nothing wrong with living your life in such a way that you will hear, well done, good and faithful servant, that you will receive a reward in heaven above and beyond just salvation, just getting in. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, and God appeals to that regularly. Further, Scripture will say uh, you are to love your neighbor as yourself. It assumes that you have to love yourself in some capacity, some form or capacity, or else you're not going to be able to love your neighbor. Um, and so, uh, and even we, we, not even just biblically, but naturally, we 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 do see ethical egoisms is a, is a big deal. I mean, that's why on a plane, when the when the oxygen comes down. They say, put it on yourself first before you put it on anyone else. If you are not taking care of yourself, then there's no way you could take care of your kids. If you pass out before, while you're putting the mask on somebody else, that doesn't help you or anybody else, and you become more of a liability. Uh, learning to take care of yourself is not an unbiblical thing. And in fact, people who don't take care of themselves are typically a, a hindrance to other people down the line. And so take care of yourself. Uh, this is the spiritual disciplines in general are kind of about ethically take care of yourself. And when you do so, uh, you will end up being closer to God. You will end up being able to take care of your community better. And so that's where I think that ethical egoism does push against our tendency to say it always has to be about other people. Well, yes and no. Yes, our lives should be about others, but it's going to be hard to make our lives about others if we're not also being filled and taken care of. Um, I think of it in my own study as a, as a pastor. If I am not in the discipline of filling myself up in God's word every week and studying and, and in prayer myself, then my work for others in pastoring and preaching God's word isn't going to be very effective or useful for God and his kingdom. And so um, there is that tendency that I think that we overlook just a little bit too much. However, there is a lot of problems in um, ethical egoism. First, let me just say a word about consequentialist ethics in general. Consequentialist ethics are, I understand why they're important to us, which is something is good or bad based upon the consequences it produces. There's gonna be other ones. So this is, it, something is good or bad if something good happens because of what you did. This is really popular and, and utilitarianism is going to be another major one that we're going to get to in a little bit. But in ethical egoism, consequentialist ethics are always problematic because we don't have the ability to predict the future. And something isn't good or bad based upon whether it produced something good or bad. Now, that would be great, but that isn't what makes something right or wrong because we can never tell what will happen. Uh, somebody could be faithful and then bad things still happen. And that, so a consequentialist ethic in general is a, is a really shaky foundation. But also, uh, the, another major problem with this system is that if we start as the center of an ethic, if we start as the center of anything, it is a doomed from the start always. That is always a poor foundation. Um, yes, we should care about ourselves, but caring about ourselves, that, and this is what this system does really poorly, it starts with the philosophy that you are a good person and what is best for you, you know what's best for you and you know what's in your best interest. It starts with a uh, with this idea that human beings are good from birth, but we know biblically that we are evil from birth, that the heart is deceitful above all things. And because the heart is deceitful, we can't possibly uh, know what is in our best interest at all time. It, it presumes these things, and, and I think it's uh, it's really poor understanding of what it means to be a human being. It doesn't understand human nature, and so that is really problematic. And because of that, ethical egoism damns people to hell. 
it damns people to hell because it says that you have within you what is good enough to know what is right over time. Yes, you might need help from other people and wisdom, but if you have a reason and the ability to discern what's best for you with enough thought. And because of that, it damns you to hell because you are not good enough on your own. You need the blood shed of Jesus Christ. You need to be forgiven by him. You are not good enough in yourself. And because of that, ethical egoism and the self-help movement today, as it stands, damns people to hell. Um, and, and secondly, not only are we a poor foundation for um, this, uh, for any ethical system, but we know through God and His in His Word that, and even experience in general, that joy is not primarily found in looking out for ourselves first, but in giving ourselves up for others. If we want to find our life, we must lose it for the sake of the gospel. Joy and happiness is found when we give ourselves over for other people. And this is why the self-help kind of mentality is problematic because it says that you should do what's best for you for yourself. And then a outflow might be that other people are probably will be that other people are helped. But that is so problematic in the Christian faith. I shouldn't be studying throughout the week simply from the foundation and for the end that I am built up in God's Word. No, it's so that I can build up others in God's Word. And that in itself is what gives me joy. Just doing it so that only I will be built up is a very shaky foundation for joy. That's true of all of your spiritual disciplines. That's true of most things in your life in general. When you are the end goal, the foundation and the end goal of why you're doing something, it ends with a lot of cynical, um, unhappy people over time. And, and this is what you see with the self-help. Get all the negative people out of your life. Get people who disagree with you out of your life because you need to do what's best for you. Those people are angry and usually, usually people that are really high in the self-help thing can end up being very angry and cynical and mean people over time because they're always about themselves and they know that they aren't fulfilled in it. Uh, and this is why I said, again, self-help books, they damn us because we make decisions based on what is best for us, not what's best for others, not what had God has done for us. And, and then uh, the last thing I'm going to say problematically about this is it gives you no real boundaries of deciding what's actually best. Okay, do what's best for you. Let's assume that everything in the system is right. You still have the problem of figuring out, well, how do I know where those boundaries are? How can I really know what's best for me? Is there no objective truth anywhere to tell me if I am the objective truth deciding what's best for me, then where are the boundaries where I'm like, well, this is good, this isn't. There, it's trying to define that we are ourselves good without giving any objective measurement for good. And, and when we do that, then eventually what's best for me, I can decide that. And when I can decide that, I can twist things around to make any desire that I want uh, be best for me. And so although an ethical egoist will come out and say, no, it's not just your desires in general, but what's actually best for you. But in a sin fallen world, me getting to decide what's best for me will a lot of times happen to line up with whatever I desire at the moment. And that's really problematic in the system because what you're gonna find is, is that most people, when they're defining what's best for them in their self-help lifestyle and who they're trying to get rid of their life, is gonna also happen, happen to line up with what their desires are at the moment. And that is really problematic. And so because of that, I think ethical egoism is very prominent in our culture and, and very uh, problematic in our culture as well. Okay, that's all I've got for us today. I hope that was helpful with cultural relativism. Obviously, there's more there. Uh, but if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me at marty at bbckc.org, and I'd be happy to answer those. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Thanks.